Hello, it's students. I'm going to give you a lecture on Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. I would like to explain you that I'm going to give you this lecture using my notes while reading Mrs. Dalloway. This is something that I recommend you to do when you have to write a paper or um, a text commentary. When you have read a book, sometimes you forget many things that you have read. So the best thing you can do is while you are reading the novel, you take notes on a notebook so that then you can uh, pay attention to those notes you wrote at that time and also write number of pages, write quotations so that you can have the impressions you had while reading the book, then you can read articles and books about this book, and finally you read a consistent, coherent and interesting paper based on your own reading experience, and also you contrast with other um, scholars' opinions and studies. I'm going to uh, explain you that this is the third time I've read Mrs. Dalloway, and for me, it's been uh, the best time. The first time I read it, I found it really interesting because of uh, it's a modernist novel and Virginia Woolf uses stream of consciousness, which is a literary technique consisting of expressing the continuous flow of the mind of the characters. Um, she is based on psychoanalysis Stream of Consciousness is a literary technique that modernist writers used based on psychoanalysis. Virginia Woolf met Sigmund Freud and she knew how um, our mind works and she tried to express it in her novel. She was based also on James Joyce's Ulysses. This is a very important influence for her when she wrote the novel. I found it interesting the novel because of the use of stream of consciousness, um, but there are many things that I didn't re realize about it the first time I read it. I read it a second time, also when I was doing my doctorate studies, and I appreciated the importance of time in the novel. The time is really important because if you can see in the novel, chapters don't have numbers, but the time, the time of the day, uh, it's significant in the novel and the way characters feel is connected with things that are happening at the same time the noisy city for example when and the characters are stressed at the same time this third time i've read the novel i realized about a lot of symbolism that i didn't realize the first time and i'm going to share my impressions and reading experience with you. First of all, Clarissa Dalloway has a negative concept of her husband, as we can perceive it from the beginning of the novel. She finds Hugh Whitebread on the street, an old lover. He is with her wife. They go to the doctors. She buys some flowers. And after that, there is a motor crash. The reader doesn't know the people who had the accident. This is a way to create intrigue. Celebrities are inside of a car with the blinds drawn. Clarissa thinks it may be the queen. There is an airplane that makes forms of letters in the sky. Its character sees a different word. I think it is a way to represent that each one sees a different reality depending on their personality. Septimus says that he wants to kill himself in the first chapter, and her wife, Lucrezia, feels embarrassed about it. Septimus' interior monologue on page 18. I quote, Men must not cut... Let me... Yes... Them. Men must not cut down trees. There is God. He noted such revelations on the backs of envelopes. 
Change the world. No one kills from hatred. Make it known. He wrote it down. He waited. He listened. A sparrow perched on the railing opposite chirped Septimus. Septimus four or five times over and went on, drawing its notes out, to sing freshly and piercingly in Greek words how there is no crime. Enjoined by another sparrow, they sang in voices prolonged and piercing in Greek words from trees in the meadow of life, beyond a river, where the dead walk, how there is no death. This is an inner monologue, and we can see Septimus feelings and the way he's thinking, and he can hear voices, and he feels connected with birds. Also, when um, Virginia Woolf was about to um, try to commit suicide, she also thought that she could hear um, birds' voices and that birds were speaking in Greek. She uses this strange feeling and strange hallucination for her novel too, because Septimus thinks that birds are also speaking to him. I think that Virginia Woolf describes madness perfectly. Septimus thinks that he can understand birds speaking in Greek, like Virginia Woolf before her suicide attempt after her father's death. Lucrezia, Septimus' wife, feels sad because he ignores her. A woman asks for the way to Regent's Park tube station. She comes from Edinburgh. Her name is Mrs. Johnson, and she is shocked by the horror she sees in Septimus. Horror, horror, she wanted to cry. This is a quotation from page 20. I think this is an allusion to Heart of Darkness. Horror, horror, like Kurt's last words in Heart of Darkness novel. I quote, why hadn't she stayed at home? Page 20. These are Macy Johnson's sentences. There are collective characters in Mrs. Dalloway, like in James Joyce's Ulysses. In the following pages, for there are not chapter numbers, Clarissa gets home and feels happy for having service. I quote, Must one repay in daily life to servants? Page 22. But she gets angry when she discovers, due to a telephone message, that her servant plays for her, that Richard is having lunch with Lady Bratton, who has not asked Clarissa to come. Clarissa expresses her happiness using flowers metaphor. She remembers Sally Seton, a female lover she had. Clarissa is bisexual or lesbian. She describes her love for her as different from the love for a man. Page 28. I quote. A refuge mm. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a refuge her dress. She finds that the love she felt for her was different from the love she felt from men, a kind of refuge. Wolf uses sentences to imitate human mind. How she tries to forget her resentfulness for Lady Bratton and thinks of beautiful things like her kindness and her dress for her party. 
Sally likes cutting the head of dahlias and put them on boughs with water. I think that the fact that Clarissa's lover, Sally, treats flowers in that way, it can be a symbol of femininity or lesbian sensi sensuality, sensitivity. Virginia Woolf's techniques to show human brain works through her characters, obsessions and repetitions. This is my Elizabeth. This is something that uh, Peter Walsh remembers many times. He remembers how Clarissa Dalloway said, this is my Elizabeth. Virginia Woolf shows characters' obsessions by repeating the same sentence again and again. In Peter Walsh's mind, he thinks, this is my Elizabeth. She said, this is my Elizabeth. Why did she say, this is my Elizabeth? He feels jealous about the fact that she had a daughter from her husband, and this is not his daughter. He, she didn't have a daughter with him, but with another man. And he thinks about it, and it is repeated in his mind because he's obsessed with it and he's angry at it. We can interpret it from his repetition of the same sentence again and again. When characters' thoughts are described in their inner monologue, there are sounds or animals that interrupt or distract them. A bee, a chirp of a bird, the sound of a car. I would like you to reflect on is it the novel for or against aristocracy? Also, we can see the influence of Oscar Wilde because the epigram, men, uh, the, the sentence of Peter Walsh, men are like this, women are like that, it reminds me of Oscar Wilde's epigrams in which he says men are something, women are the other thing, women uh, are like their mothers, <clears throat> this is their tragedy. There are many exclamations in the novel to show emotions. The use, the use of brackets are to create a sense of private thoughts or secret facts. Elizabeth is different from, from Mrs. Dalloway's physically. Elizabeth has a very close relationship with Mrs. Kilman. For her, she's a role model. She has been a hard-working woman. Lady Bratton Richard Dalloway and Hugh Whitebread have lunch together. Lady Bratton and Richard have conversations while Hugh basically eats. It has certain sense of humor, how it is narrated. He ate his souffle, etc. Richard admired Lady Bratton for being so aristocratic. She's quite masculine. She acts like a man and talks about politics. She doesn't like Clarissa at all. She tends to meet men and she doesn't invite her their wives. Septimus commits suicide by throwing himself from the window. The doctors were at his place because of what he said he was going to kill himself. He's upset with Evans and the war. He asks Rezia to bomb his writings and what he asked her to write. She keeps them instead. Madness is perfectly described. Feeling pain with hallucinations, hearing uncomfortable voices and sounds, etc. Peter Walsh thinks about Clarissa and doesn't want to read her letter. He finds it difficult to express his feelings and blames Indian culture for it. He meets the Morrises and finally decides he will go to Clarissa's party 
to ask Richard about how is India going and for gossiping. Finally, Peter Walsh goes to Clarice's party. There, the omniscient narrator tells us that Clarissa loves social life. It could have been a good idea to live near the country because she loves it and it would have been good for her health because she enjoys social life a lot. The omniscient narrator of the novel gives importance to all characters. We learn a lot about their past and present. The Prime Minister attends the party. The Prime Minister's name is not mentioned in the novel. Who was the Prime Minister of London at the novel's time? We can do some research about it. Clarissa introduces Peter to Lady Bratton, telling him that he had been in Burma, India. I quote page 131. She, Millicent Bratton, had the thought of empire always at hand. The Union Jack. Sally Seton also attends the party and tells Clarissa she has five children. Ellen Atkins accused Hugh Whitebread of kissing her for saying that women should have votes. Peter and Clarissa talk together calmly. There is an idiom to express insanity on page 132, on the verge of. It is interesting to see that in the novel we find the same idiomatic expressions that are used nowadays, like on the verge of, on the spur of the moment, etc. From a linguistic point of view. The Bradshaws tell Clarissa about septimal suicide. I quote, this is on page 133. A young man had killed himself. And referring to Clarissa, the following quotation, I quote, a young man had killed himself. Her dress flamed, her body burned, end of quotation. I guess it means that it affects her deeply. The suicide affects Clarissa Dalloway. If it were now to die, why do you think that she feels identified with the young man who has killed himself? She feels surprisingly happy after having felt sad when hearing the news. There are many literary figures mentioned in the novel, Shakespeare, Milton and Emily Bront. Sally thinks that it must be sad for Peter to be alone at his age without having children. I think that it is a way to express that Peter Walls finds superficial Clarissa's love for flowers and plants. Maybe it is a way and conscience to express that he doesn't understand femininity. Referring to Clarissa, he says, I quote, Despairing of human relationships, she often went into the garden and got from flowers a piece. The novel finishes with Richard feeling proud of his Elizabeth and Peter asking saying, I will come. What is this excitement, terror? Sally answers, it is Clarissa. So he feels some fear of women. There's a romantic ending expressing the power of sublime love. Thank you very much. Bye bye.